You can go ahead and turn your cameras off. All right, we're live. Here we go. You can go ahead and turn your cameras off. Yep, see, already making mistakes. All right, we're live. Welcome to SGUSD Arts Week 2021. Arts Week is a district initiative that was developed to motivate and encourage our school community to create art and to promote arts education in the San Gabriel Unified School District. We are proud to present this inaugural event to you and we hope you've enjoyed it so far. And we're very excited about our segment today. But before we get started, we have a couple of credits. Our Arts Week logo was designed by Gabrielino Sr. in the graphic design class, Miss Lily C2. Our Arts Week theme song that you just heard was written, performed and recorded by seventh grader Ajani Romero in the band class at Jefferson Middle School. Our Arts Week promo video, that's the first thing you see when you visit our website, was done by Gabrielino Sr., Gabriel Martinez. And all of our Arts Week social media promotion that you've seen was done by our brand new high school internship, public relations, information, and social media, otherwise known as PRISM. Arts Week is an initiative from our district that has been a couple years in the making. Um, uh, San Gabriel Unified developed a brand new visual and performing arts strategic plan that was implemented in June of 2019. And Arts Week is a part of that. This is the first year we're doing it. It is uh, virtual this year with plans for an in-person Arts Week in the years to come. I wanna thank all of these organizations that you see on this page for supporting visual and performing arts in our district and all of our donors that you see listed. We welcome sponsorships and donations for any amount. 100% of the proceeds goes directly to further implementing that strategic plan, which is available for public view on our website at sgusdvapa.org. Today is Thursday, March 25th, 2021. It is 8.45 in the morning. We are so happy to present to you uh, Mr. Emmett Seuss. He is a Gabrielino visual art teacher and he's going to talk to you about his classes today. And we have some very special guests with us um, he's brought some students, Andrew Dietrich, Anthony Grande, and Moya Horde. Welcome, everybody. You can turn your cameras on and share with us. Good morning, Sam. So I'm Emmett Seuss. I teach at Gabrielino High School. I'm one of the three art teachers. Um, Miss Hopper and Mix Ross are the other teachers. I teach a beginning class. All three teachers teach beginning art, and then I teach intermediate drawing and painting and advanced art. I have some students here that represent the different class levels. So Moya is representing the advanced, Andrew's representing the intermediate students, and Anthony's representing the intro students. So uh, anytime you guys want to chime in during the presentation, I want you to make a comment. And then afterwards, we'll just uh, hear from you guys as far as virtual academy and what the year has been like taking our art classes. So I think I will share... Uh, my presentation, we had a general blanket theme this year of adventure because we didn't know there was a lot of uncertainty and we thought the healthiest way to approach this would to be approach it as an adventure. And so if I can share my screen here. Uh, this presentation, I created it basically to entertain the students in the class. So the presentation is an adventure, and I don't know if we're going to have time to do the whole adventure. But uh, we used PowerPoint because the Google Slides presentations wouldn't allow us to put the video in the background. So we had to use PowerPoint, and it's working out pretty well. The um, 
the the two main things that we want to share with the community is our virtual art gallery and this is where the students are housing their artwork the advanced students all made solo galleries and that is on the next slide this is our wonder book where we stored our 3d art projects uh, we made paper mache and ceramic art these are the links to the advanced students solo galleries and this will all be posted on the sgusd website under VAPA when we're done with the presentation today. When we start our, and we can turn off the background music by going like this. When we start each project, we have to anchor them in our elements and our principles and in our state standards. But then San Gabriel Unified School District also has the new program of portrait of a graduate. And we try to make the, we try to have our projects touch on these different competencies in the POG. And then um, how our adventure theme turned into a real adventure. We studied Ida Laura Pfeiffer, who uh, had uh, was a uh, struck with wanderlust, which means she went out and she explored in the world and collected specimens and interesting items to bring back. And these different cabinets of curiosity or wonder rooms are the beginning of modern museums. So that was part of our theme this year as well, is collecting on your adventures, bringing home things to entertain your friends and family. We use this app called Book Creator in order to create a book of our 3D projects. And the link on the second slide will take you to this so you can explore our artwork. Um, we wanted to make a virtual gallery and when I contacted the gallery to see if everybody could collaborate and put their art in their gallery, they said that that option was not available yet, that we could look forward to that in the future. So Moya, being an advanced student and having uh, technology skills, um, Moya agreed. Can I say volunteered? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so Moya was responsible for, yeah, Moya was responsible for taking uh, art that was uploaded into my Google Drive and she would take it from the folders and assemble it into the art gallery. And we appreciate all of her hard help, her, her assistance with that. So uh, we tried to get onto our gallery one morning and we discovered that it was not available for either one of us. And when I contacted them, they told us that there had been a fire in France where they store our gallery and that the uh, gallery had burnt down. So last year, and Andrew was in my class last year, and Andrew was preparing for open house and we were all excited we we're going to curate a big show. And uh, then it turns out that the pandemic hit. And this year, Moya had put together this beautiful gallery for us and then it burnt down. But in 48 hours, they contacted us and said that they were going to be able to move our information somewhere else and the gallery came back online. So we'll be able to share that with you today. Um, the district tech department has whitelisted this Chrome extension. And if you go to the Chrome web store and download this, you'll be able to work some of the puzzles that you find on the wall in our gallery. So um, it, it gives you crayons that you can change the color and then you'd be able to work the puzzles, which makes the artwork in the gallery uh, interactive and, and you can spend hours doing that. Uh, we just wanted to remind everybody that Ceph is having this art competition and that the deadline for entries is on April 9th. So uh, get your artwork turned in to that. That's gonna be a wonderful event district-wide. And then uh, this is a video that the Visual and Performing Arts Department at Gabrielino put together about the different art classes and our program at the high school. And that link will also be on the VAPA webpage. So what I would like to do is switch to sharing the gallery with you. And let me escape from this presentation. And this is um, our gallery. 
new share. And if you hit the play button, it will take you through an automated tour through the gallery, but you can also move manually through this and let's, I'm not a gamer really, so this is harder for me to move through. But this hallway here is the different puzzles and we designed it to feel like a labyrinth because uh, the puzzles were all about Theseus and the Minotaur. And then the students used important symbols from their own artist bio, from their own life. And they made mazes that had symbols in it that represent things that are important to them. That is amazing. And these, this, what I have, and you can see it here on my screen up here, I have the extension. And when you drop it down, you get to choose your color and then you get to choose your pencil. And then if you zoom into these pieces of artwork, you'll be able to try to work the puzzles. So um, the district has assured me that this is district wide, that you are able to access this thing. It's called web paint. And then this is the eraser and this is the get rid of the menu. If you click on any of the artwork in the gallery, it will tell you who the artist is and there may be more or less information from the artist, what grade they're in or what age they are. So we'll come back to the Egypt and the ancient Greece projects. This uh, part of the gallery back here is our value drawing assignment and the students were able to pick um, either Buddhist art or uh, Gothic cathedrals as their theme. And some students, um, because of, you know, what we've been going through our, our experiences, some students pick things like the California wildfires and there are some other, um, the burning of Notre Dame 2019 is also in here. And suddenly... There's a, a trick, uh, Mr. Seuss, if you yes. use your arrow buttons on the bottom right corner of your keyboard, right. you, might, you might have more success. Yeah. All right. So here, uh, this we've talked about metamodernism and metaxi being stuck in between two different poles. And so the students were able to digitally alter their reference image if they wanted to before they did their drawings. And um, there's just such a nice variety of different approaches to the same assignment. Here's one with the California wildfires. And then uh, when we finished with the uh, value drawing from the medieval times, uh, Middle Ages, we wanted to step into modern art with so much we have to skip. I pulled the, st I pulled the students at the beginning of the year to find out what periods would be most interested, interesting to them. We skipped all the way across Renaissance and went straight into modern art. And so we used uh, the idea of taking a risk and randomness to wrinkle a piece of copy paper and then un unwrinkle it and trace the wrinkle shapes. And the students made stained glass uh, projects out of that randomness that they discovered. This, this project, they poked their finger into the paper to create four different of these wrinkles and, and these papers, they wrinkled them. And then the students had the option if they wanted to, to, to include representational um, subject matter and they could work that into their stained glass as well. So it, it, it was our bridge between the Gothic cathedrals and modern art. And we uh, talked about Frank Stella and we talked about different modern artists and their action paintings and their approach to creating their artwork. Um, before we did the value drawings, we visited um, two different time periods. The intro students visited ancient Greece and we talked about the black figure vases we talked about silhouette and then because the intermediate students start with the prehistoric art in the caves, we went into the tombs of ancient Egypt and learned about how art functioned in ancient Egypt and what, uh, what service the artist was to the culture. And um, from there, we moved into 3D and this is our wonder book and if you if you click on the link on the uh, San Gabriel Unified School District webpage, it'll take you to this book. 
I'm hoping that there's other teachers in the district that will be able to use this. Uh, we found it very interesting that you could change the voice and have the book read to you. And we pick Anna because she Anna. Rep she represents the um, the Ida Laura Pfeiffer for us, and she's on a tour to collect her specimens on her journey. And then this is our book of the journey. Gaprilino High School, two thousand and twenty, two thousand and twenty one, von der Burg. And the nice thing is, you can speed Anna up so that she can fly through this book for you. During the global pandemic of 2020-2021, Gaprilino <laughs> High School art students did their part to reduce the spread of the coronavirus by staying safe at home. This did not stop them from going on the greatest adventure of all, a safari into imagination. Here are a few of the specimens that they discovered. We hope that you enjoy our collection. Shannon Citran P. 2. The fruit bee is extremely difficult to find. And you can go through the whole book like that, and you can also uh, change the voice uh, to, to any voice that you want. And the, the, the amount of creativity in here is just amazing. Some students talked about how they approached the project, and then some students put some uh, a fictitious narrative in here that talked from the creature's perspective or from Laura Ida Pfeiffer's perspective. This, um, this application also allows you to upload audio and videos, and we didn't do that because all of that is lost if you publish it into a physical book. So um, here's a nice example of a student that used the audio. Log 3, 13, year 3. In broken pieces of matter, fragments of reality, distance between. So we're hoping that um, the that other teachers in the district will have a use for this, and maybe they're already using it. But especially for our three D project, I felt that the book format would work better than a gallery format. And then uh, these are our collection that we came back with from our adventure. The next project that the students are going to enter after spring break is going to be they have to collaborate with three other artists and they have to create a composition that represents the world that their creatures would exist in so it's going to be a collaborative virtual distance learning academy project and that will definitely be an adventure we have no idea how that's going to work out so uh, let's start with Moya. Moya, thank you very much for, for helping us put together our gallery. We could not do it without you. Gladly. And have you decided on what art college you're going to yet? No, uh, I have yet to make that decision. All right. I have no idea. Moya has taken a number of different sat weekend classes and evening classes, and she did a presentation that we recorded for the students as far as uh, pursuing an art career and deciding on a college and and the different things that she's learned from her other art classes. So we also appreciate your do, taking the time to do that for us, Maya. We had a number of different alumni come back from um, different art schools and they talked about what it was like to get accepted to the school and what they're learning at the school. We had a student from Laguna College come back. She's in the middle of her senior film right now and that's preparing us for the concept art environment collaboration project that we're going to uh, start on when we get back from spring break. Um, Anthony has been my co-host in my Zoom class and he makes sure that when people are dropped from their uh, Wi-Fi that they get in without missing too much of the class. I appreciate that, Anthony. And uh, what has that been like taking an art class as a senior in uh, Virtual Academy? Um, it's been different, obviously, because like you said, some people say, like, how are you supposed to do art when you're in a Zoom class? But it's been it's been fine. It's been more than fine. It's we've been learning about different techniques. It's the projects, even even if we're supposed to figure them out ourselves, it's fun to do them because it's something different than any other class you would ever take um, during virtual academy. So, yeah, it's been pretty fun. Did you did you get an opportunity to flex your imagination at all? Uh, what do you mean by that? You know, uh, 
instead of just dealing in reality, like going places, uh, making things up, being creative, any any opportunity for that? Um, yeah, most some of the yeah most of the projects yeah, because I usually think about like different worlds and different things all the time. So I relate some of my projects to that. And do you feel like when we did the artist bio at the beginning of the year, we have to do a little self-reflection on what's important to you and, and uh, your goals and things. Do you feel like you work that information into the projects? I feel like I, I feel like um, kind of like I would have like a different sense of my personality at different times. I don't think my personality always stays the same, but the artist bio would capture what my general, what the general idea of what the projects I would produce or right. what the things I would find value. That, that's a very good point. I mean, we, um, we do the artist bio at the beginning of the year and then we don't really change that at all. I didn't know that Google was going to want to verify me again. And here we are. So this is my um, this is my Google Drive, and every student has a Google portfolio. So the home page of their portfolio is dynamic, and they have to update their home page at every grading period. So the artist bio is pretty static from the beginning of the year, but the home page does continue uh, self reflection where the students put information that has new new things that have happened to them or or things that interest them since the last time that we um, turned our portfolios in and there's Anthony's and it goes on and on there's a hundred and seventy five of these portfolios so Andrew you're also a senior and you're in the intermediate class and the difference between the intro class uh, physical uh, environment on campus and this virtual intermediate what are you what are you feeling are the biggest the, the biggest difference in the way that you create your artwork and approach the project I think the uh, the biggest difference is honestly in intro things for me obviously first time a lot of the experiences I didn't really know where to take foot or where to put like my first step and everything so I always kind of would like talk to people around me, see what they were going through thinking. And I kind of like the classroom. The, yeah. I, I, I like to communicate with throughout the people in the classroom. And I kind of was able to eventually culminate a bunch of ideas where then I could like start basing my own imagination kind of off the, off that basis. It's so true. The dynamic in the classroom where we get to have conversations and bounce ideas, even when you guys are just going to the back room, to the sink, to put your, to clean your brushes or to put your artwork away, you get, the exposure you get to see other people's projects in process and we didn't really get as much of that yeah it's it's fun like building up your own project while what you're watching your friends build up their their own as well you kind of share the experience together right and you know i've done my best with the slide presentations to make sure that the instructions were clear while still leaving enough room for you guys to interpret the project your own way do you feel like that is working with the the slide the google slide presentations and you feel like most of the time you know where you have the freedom and what's required yeah i think the presentations make it pretty clear what you're because usually i've always noticed if you're like your, your slide shows is you put exactly what you expect in the, the first few slides and then after that you kind of you always show examples of other artists or other artworks and you kind of like start expanding our, our minds out to let us do what kind of what we want while still fitting those ideas and especially with the new uh project that's coming up it's going to be um difficult because you have to work with other artists and that project, it has to be clear on the pieces, all the pieces need to fit together in order for us to make a bigger artwork out of the, um, this is a, Sam, this is a, an example of my poll. And at the end of the first semester, I asked the students in a Google form what they want to try to cover more of in second semester. And so this is what I start with. Uh, I take uh, their input and then uh, try to build what we need to fit into second semester around what it is that they have an interest in. And um, so we're going to do concept art, which is different than conceptual art. So right from the get go, I have to explain to them the difference of that. 
And then Moya, which which slide is an example? Which one did you give to us? Do you remember? Um, what concept art example? Yeah, you. I you, mean, I'd say any of these could be concept art. Right. But um, the Notan is what I um told you about where right, you with have the extreme to... the extreme yeah. poles between the white and the black with less of the values is the notan but i thought that i put an example like this is linda's um and she's an alumni that came back to speak to us but i thought that we had uh this is james um Stro strobe and she came back from um from art college to speak to us and then, uh, you know, even though we have a lot of this game kind of environment art, I try to um, allow the students to go their own direction by including examples like Grandma Moses and whatever kind of style they decide is right for their environment, they get to go that direction. So we want to encourage risk taking and we don't mind failing and we don't have time to improve our failures, but the learning experience is the most important thing. So when when we have a project that doesn't work out, um, as long as the students put in the labor and took the risks, then they can still score high in the class. So how do you so Andrew, you're going to be creating one of these with your um, randomly chosen three other creatures. Um, how do you feel about this assignment? I think it's definitely going to be interesting to say the least, trying to collaborate with students on the uh, the virtual academy. But I think it's going to be good to finally um, interact with them and see how you know how well we can uh, connect with one another. Because you know this year, obviously, there hasn't been enough. Yeah, this year, you know, communication could be difficult at times. So this project will definitely right. get that through. Samantha, what happened was uh, Mr. Saparito, in charge of our wellness center at Gabrielino, he asked for artwork for the wellness center. But the students only have small pieces of paper at home. So we're going to have four students work together and try to piece their pieces together in order to make bigger art for the wellness center. And, and we don't really care if it really lines up or not, as long as the piece winds up being interesting. And this is the form that they're going to have to do, and they're going to have to list their creatures. And then um, Mr. Salcedo in the science department has helped me come up with, uh, you, you pick your own breakout room, and these groups of four students will all go into their breakout rooms and try to create these worlds. Wow, that that's actually that's amazing because it's, it actually will be the process of it will be kind of a historical little monument to the time correct, that correct. they created that art too. It's and it still fits in with our theme. The adventure continues. Yeah. That's amazing. I can't wait to see that. And we do have to get to our embedded time right now. All right. <laughs> well, I, thank you. Um, you guys, if you you're going to go to your embedded class, you, you came on here and we did this just in time for you to go right back to teaching. Mr. Seuss, thank you so much um, for coming on and sharing this. Anthony and Andrew and Moya, thank you very, very much for sharing your 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 work is amazing. This thank is you. my favorite week ever yeah. <laughs> um it's been such an honor to share everybody's uh creativity it's so amazing and inspiring so thank you so much i'm gonna i'm gonna send us off with our thank yous and credits and if you gotta go you gotta go so thank you so much you guys all right thanks for coming you guys thank you sam absolutely uh i, I thank you if we have some thank yous to list for arts week in general um, our art contest co-chairs, volunteers, Jill Redding and Vanessa Pinedo. Sponsorships and donations have been headed up by Andy Jiang and Cami Trong. Uh, additional volunteers, Joanna Ward and Fan Shu. A very, very special thanks to all of our presenters and all of our pres uh, participants, especially our students. Um, you are the reason we exist. Um, so it's so nice to hear you directly. Um, to our Gabrielino High School Key Club who helped promote this event, our art contest judges, uh, Mr. Seuss was one of them. Thank you so much for volunteering your time for that. We look forward to presenting the results of that tomorrow morning. 
um, to our VAPA Advisory Council, who have uh, members have volunteered to help guide this whole process for the last two years. And uh, most importantly, our SGUSD Governing Board, without your um, unwavering support for visual and performing arts, uh, we wouldn't be here. So thank you for that. Again, thank you to our donors and our sponsors. And that's all she wrote. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Bye.